as the sun becomes an expanding red giant and threatens to engulf the earth in 100 years. The United Nations, now renamed as the United Earth Government UEG, decides to proceed with the Moving Mountain Project, a proposal of building 10,000 gigantic nuclear fusion engines that can propel the Earth out of the solar system towards another habitable star system. A sister project, the Lunar Exile Project, was also initiated that would involve pushing the moon away from the Earth utilizing three such fusion engines to minimize its gravitational attraction on Earth. In doing so, the UEG shuts down and bans the Digital Life Project DLP, one that proposes continuing human civilization through digital immortality by developing mind. Uploading technologies. Despite skepticism and increasingly violent protests from the public, the first phase of the Moving Mountain Project is to pilot two of such fusion engines. One is one of the three lunar exile engines built near a research base in the moon's Campanus crater, and the other located near the space elevator built in Libreville, Gabon. However, during the construction of the engines, a series of terrorist attacks by well-armed DLP supporters on the UEG facilities in 2044 resulted in a hacked drone attack on the space elevator, coordinated hacking of the elevator vehicles by highly trained infiltrators with the aim of destroying the Ark space station supplying the lunar operation. Although UEG trainee astronaut Liu Pekyong and his fellow trainees managed to defeat the hijackers on their vehicles, this was after the hijackers detonated one elevator with a missile that bypassed the cargo bay using counterfeit passes. As a result, the top of the space elevator and the Ark space station are critically damaged and crashed down to Earth. Due to this attack, many countries working on the pilot program pulled out, leaving China alone to take on finishing construction of the lunar and Earth engine. Meanwhile on the moon, to hang you, a computer engineer part of the lunar exile pilot program, is awakened from hibernation to receive a batch of supplies, which includes a 550C, the newest of the 550 series quantum computer intended for test running the lunar engine. Using a 550A that appears to be owned by him, to hang you views a simulation of his daughter to Yaya, who had died in a car crash five years prior. As part of the DLP before it was outlawed, to hang you succeeded in recording his daughter's consciousness and storing it on a hard drive, with his mentor and project lead Ma Zhao bearing the responsibility. However, Yaya's digital consciousness can only live for two minutes before restarting. Due to the 550A's hardware restrictions, for this, Tu Heng Yu sought to use the newer 550C, but was outright rejected by Ma Zhao. During transportation of the 550C, it was damaged by a sudden solar storm. And in a meeting with other accompanied scientists, Tu Heng Yu proposed to use his 550A for the testing. In return, to ask Ma Zhao to involve him in future developments of the 550 series in hopes of having a chance to give Yaya a complete life. Following the successful test runs of both the lunar engine, as well as the subsequent Earth engine, the UEG gives the full go-ahead to the Moving Mountain Project. In the next 14 years, over 7,000 engines were built at and north of the equator, with those at the equator being torque engines that stopped the Earth's rotation. Subterranean cities were built under every engine as well providing shelter for ordinary citizens for the upcoming 2,500-year interstellar journey. However, a sortition plan made it that only 50% of the world's population can gain a spot in the underground cities. Liu Pekyang, in the meanwhile, marries colleague Han Duo Duo and subsequently conceives their son Liu Qi. The Moving Mountain Project is officially renamed as the Wandering Earth Project. And the Lunar Exile Project goes in full swing as the three completed lunar engines start to propel the moon away from Earth. As time goes on, the solar crisis becomes more and more imminent, evidenced by spikes in solar radiation. Due to the radiation, large parts of the world's population fell to cancer. Hondo Duo among one of them. More bad news struck as Liu Pekyang was the only one in his family to obtain a spot in the subterranean cities and only their son Liu Qi is eligible to tag along. In 2058, Liu Pekyang applies for work in the rebuilt space station, 
now renamed the Navigator ISS, in hopes of being part of a preferential policy that could guarantee Hondo do a spot in the subterranean cities as well. During an interview conducted by an offline AI-equipped 550W, the newest and most advanced 550 series iteration, Liu Pikian becomes enraged by the 550W as it confirms his family-oriented intentions of working aboard the Navigator ISS, all being part of a stress test personalized for each examinee. To Heng Yu, being one of the examiners, witnesses Liu Pikiang's anger unfold, and has a flashback of the car crash that killed his daughter, having not seen his daughter in the past 14 years, and having been influenced by Liu Pikiang's outburst. The now elderly To Heng Yu decides to upload to Yaya's recorded consciousness into the 550W supercomputer still kept in the interview room. Immediately after doing this upload, the lunar engines overload and then explode, sending the moon on a collision course towards Earth. To Heng Yu, having broken the law by the upload, was immediately arrested and imprisoned. To deal with the lunar fall crisis, the UEG initiates a backup plan that involves detonating all of the Earth's nuclear weapons on a concentrated phased ray on the Campanus crater, triggering nuclear fusion within the moon's core, thereby leading to its implosion. After that, the 7,000 Earth engines will be powered up to propel the Earth out of the lunar debris way. However, as the lunar fall crisis happened on such a short order, the dedicated control network of the Earth engines haven't been completed. Thereby, via rebooting the Internet root server data centers located in Tokyo, Beijing and Dulles, a plan was initiated to restart the Internet, which had been long shut down to use as a control network. To Heng Yu, while serving his jail term, was recalled by the Chinese government to undertake the task of restarting Beijing's root server, as part of a team which included his mentor Ma Zhao. The counter for the lunar fall crisis faces numerous setbacks due to the difficulties in nuclear code decryption, further exacerbated by the short time window before the moon reaches its Roche limit and fragments into pieces which will destroy the Earth. Liu Pikyang, as part of the mission detailed to place nukes on the moon, narrowly avoids death as his team's spaceship crashes into debris sent up by the exploded lunar engines. He finds transport in the abandoned research base, as well as a lander that he used to send the rest of his team back to the Navigator ISS with, much to their displeasure, while he himself transports the nukes assigned to his team. In the meantime, the code deciphering hits a deadlock, which led to 300 astronauts over the age of 50 voluntarily sacrificing themselves in order to manually detonate the nukes. Liu narrowly survives the nuclear detonation, managing to pilot a capsule back to the Navigator ISS. Around this time, lunar debris had already started hitting the Earth, one of which scored a direct hit on Beijing's data center, flooding the insides and drowning Ma Zhao. To Heng Yu, realizing he doesn't have long before drowning as well, uploads a copy of his own recorded consciousness into the network. Reuniting with Tu Yaya, his digital self manages to reboot the last internet server in time, activating the Earth engines en masse and moving the Earth away from the course of the lunar debris. The Wandering Earth project then officially sets sail with the Earth's course towards Jupiter. In a mid credit scene, Tu's digital self is addressed by the 550W artificial intelligence, who now goes by the personified name Moss 550W upside down. The now sentient supercomputer reveals that it has been behind every crisis that has ever harmed humanity's efforts to save themselves, adding that it will also trigger many more in the future.